Welcome back, everyone. Again, um, youtube.com slash Ryan's Vedic Astrology, the Asheville Vedic Astrology.com channel. Um, I'm here once more with Fiona, Fiona McGlynn, who is an astrological apprenticeship student, um, uh, probably one of the best ones I have. So uh, that's why I wanted her to be on this channel with me to participate in this continued conversation about the planets for each ascendant. And today we're going to be talking about uh, Jupiter for a Libra ascendant. So welcome back, Fiona. It's good to see you again. Thank you, Ryan. Great to see you too. Yeah, and, and you know, like me, it seems like we never like change our clothes. I know. We're just efficient. <laughs> We're efficient like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've got seven of these shirts you know, in my closet and I just put one on every day. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> actually, I think my Zoom photo has this shirt on it. So maybe <laughs> this is possibly the only shirt I own. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, and this shirt, you know, I was talking about it before. This was uh, made by one of our other year three astrological apprenticeship students. So who knows, maybe she'll make it available for, for purchase at some point. <laughs> yes, great. Anyway. Sounds good. So today, Jupiter for mm. Libra Ascendant. Yes. And Jupiter rules the third and the sixth house. And we know, well, first of all, before we get into that, um, when we think about Jupiter and Venus, um, how do they usually function together from your experience and from what, from what you've learned? Uh, well, it's interesting, isn't it? They both got this role of being a little bit the advisor and the guru, right? right. But for different things. So Jupiter, this enormous vision of life and how everything fits together and that it's all going to be okay because of this faith and trust, all these big things. And Venus, um, much more... Uh, grounded in the the matter of of the experience of life, um, and so guiding us through this uh, what feels good and what will be good for us in the long term. Um, so, is that what you were getting at? Yeah, yeah. Want to add something there? Well, I know I threw I just dumped that on you because I, I gave you the idea of what we were going to be talking about, and I just yes. popped into my head. Um, but the thing I was kind of thinking about uh, to add to what you were saying was the idea that you know oftentimes. Um, you know, we think about Jupiter and Venus as being, they're both great benefics. They're both yes, gentle true. plants. They're both caring. They're both, they want yes. people to thrive and grow. But, uh, you know, when it comes to how they interact with each other, you know, Venus is an enemy to Jupiter. Exactly. Right. So Venus is an enemy yep. to Jupiter. And that, that people don't necessarily get that. They'll see Venus and Jupiter in a sign and they'll say, oh, wonderful. Yeah. Right. So in your, that, what I wanted to kind of lead into is that idea of why would Venus hurt Jupiter or, or mm -hmm. why, why, isn't, why isn't Venus necessarily the best for, say, a combination with Jupiter or yes. that energy? Yes, 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 exactly. I mean, you know, I think my response to that is that they're trying to solve the same problem in two different ways. Yeah. Um, uh, but of course... Uh, if we take it to that larger tardy of Astrola, which gives us a bit of an insight, is that Venus is always uh, giving us, giving Jupiter the sense of something more and something better over the corner, uh, right over the horizon, isn't it? It's sort of got the, and now do this, and it'll, it'll be even better over there, and um, can lead to this feeling of never sati satiating. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, yeah, and that's one of the reasons why. You know, you'll see, you know, once you start doing more sessions and many astrologers have seen when their clients write back to them and say, oh, um, you know, you told me that this, this uh, Jupiter Venus Dasha was going to be wonderful. Yeah. And it hasn't. It's been anything but wonderful. It's been, you know, one frustration after another and nothing seems yeah. to go exactly to that state of fulfillment that I want. And that's because just what you said, um, Jupiter wants to be happy. That's, that's your sense of happiness. Jupiter wants to be yeah. peaceful. And Venus is saying, okay, you can be peaceful if you just do one more thing. If you just yeah. find, you know, get a little more money or find a little better teacher or get a little bigger house or a little more beautiful spouse or, you know, just get a little stronger. And it's never any. It's, it's that, that carrot on a stick that you never get to, right? So anyway, I just wanted to talk about that a minute so people could have a <laughs> sense of, just how those two go together. So let's get back to the idea of Jupiter rules the third and the sixth 
for a Libra ascendant? And what does that mean? How, how does Jupiter then function for a Libra ascendant? Yeah, so this is, again, we always look forward to Jupiter as being um, a wonderful force in the chart and how fantastic it is. And for Libra, just the way it's set up with Jupiter ruling the third and the sixth, these are, would be considered to be difficult houses or houses of suffering or um, houses that can cause us problems. And here we go, we've got this great potential benefic, you know, that could be giving so much good luck to the chart and bang, it's looking after these two more difficult situations. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, in some ways, it's taking away some of the, the big greatness of Jupiter because um, the third house, we've got um, maybe some of this egoic or selfishness, sometimes some force about uh, what we want to achieve in our life happening there in the third. And then the sixth, we've got you know, this house of suffering, but, you know, say illness and long-term chronic things and um, enemies and obstacles. And here's Jupiter. So on one level, one has to think that, well, you know, it's good to have the greatest benefic in these two difficult houses, because at least he's doing the best help that he can right. to the situation. Um, but um, perhaps causing some difficulty there for the for the labor ascendant right and and the reason it does that is because you know with the third and the sixth house these are houses of kind of uh of grit and strength mm. and yep. whenever you take a, a benefic planet and yep. you, you stick it in the third and sixth you know the person can try now let's just pretend for a minute that say the third and the sixth lord is exalted yes okay. if that's the case then the yeah. person might be lucky, very lucky in dealing with their enemies. Yes. Very lucky in, in dealing with uh, worldly things. Things just kind of like work, just kind of fall into place for them. Um, but that's not usually how it works for people. With that third and six, it's, it's they, they either trust too much their peers, third house things, their siblings, or they, they, they're the kind of uh, individuals who have this idea like, oh, you know, I really love making candles. I hate my job. So I'm going to quit my job and follow my happiness to make candles and everything will work out. Yep. And they make their candles, but they can't pay their rent. And they're wondering, well, why is that the case? You know, I followed my bliss, right? Or with the, the third or the sixth house uh, rulership, you know, you have to be able to be on a schedule, have a routine, take care of your responsibilities, change the oil in your car, you know, put the, the ink in your printer, um, take your vitamins or exercise. That's what keeps a body thriving and running well. But with Jupiter in the sixth, oftentimes the person will say, oh, it'll be fine. You know, I'll get around to it. They become in a sense too sloppy with it. Mm. Or sixth house things, they become too trusting of their enemies. You know? yep. Yep. Someone comes up to them and, 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 you know, there's an issue with legal matters or, or something else. Oh, you know, I'm sure they won't sue me. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure nothing's going to go wrong here. I don't need insurance for that. And then what happens is it backfires on them because they were in a sense too trusting or even maybe too gullible. So mm. that, that third six rulership can be good in certain situations. But what you mentioned, that is difficult because now you've got this benefic planet, which isn't really ruling over houses that Jupiter is, is say fondly associated with, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what I'm really picking up in what you're saying is that that optimism of Jupiter it maybe works against itself here or works against those sixth house and third house situations. So, right. And, and when you, you know, things pop in my mind too, is we have these kinds of conversations. Just, if you think about it, you know, Venus has two cruel planets exalted in angles Yes. Mars is exalted in the fourth, Saturn's exalted in the fourth, or excuse me, Saturn's exalted in the first. Yes. Yep. And with Jupiter, it's, de it's, it's debilitated in the fourth house, right? You can get it exalted in the 10th, and that's a wonderful position mm. because then the luck does can pour forth, right? Yes, yes, yes. But in, but in other positions, what you're doing is you're taking that third and sixth Lord, and it's not necessarily going to be in, in the best places, say, in Mercury signs, and Venus's signs, in um, one of Saturn's signs. So it, it's got it's got a harder road to travel based on how the friendships work out. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Do you think there's any um, any grace there in both the third and the sixth house being houses that improve over time? Like, is it something that Jupiter can get better with? Do yes, you yes. And that's I'm glad you brought that up because you know I, I'm thinking of someone in, right now whom whom I've been looking at their chart for and. Um, 
they're they're young you know they're mm-hmm. they're not quite they're not quite past young adulthood yet and I, I see the way they're living their life and they are um, you know ruled over by one of these mercury Venus kind of uh, charts and um, but I know that as they mature, as their Saturn gets stronger, they will understand how to use their Jupiter better, right? Yep. But yep. oftentimes that's why for a, um, uh, a Libra ascendant, these can be the most idealistic, fanatical people that you ever meet because they get this grandiose idea of how life is supposed to be, that, that Jupiter. And you know, with Mars being potential difficulty debilitated in the 10th, these 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 this idealism is just so strong when they're younger but as their saturn gets stronger as their saturn matures as they begin to to navigate and and learn how to tap into that mars then they're able to look at their jupiter and say oh here's the right place for this kind of energy but Mm -hmm. i'm not going to i'm not going to try to count on it to, to, to guide my life i know that hard work saturn i know being logical mars I know that being of, of, of devotion, uh, having devotion and, and, and being of service to the world, you know, Venus being exalted in the sixth, those are going to be the things that helped up, uplift my life and, and help pull me forward, right? So I think you're right in that they're, 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 in, they're houses of improvement where, where yeah. they will grow into it over time. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then is that a nice place then for us to look at that Jupiter will be debilitated in the fourth house in Capricorn? Correct, yes. Correct. Mm-hmm. Um, and so for me, is this also leading to that delusion thing that Jupiter, you were talking about Jupiter can be too trusting in the three and the six. So you can be deceived or manipulated by your your siblings, your peers, your enemies. Exactly. Partly because debilitated in the fourth is your inner compass. Right. And, and it's your like, home. Yeah, and your home. And you can't, you're not uh, really right. got that good connection. That's not your strongest place in this case. So you can be misled because you right. can't feel that kick that, oh, this is right or this is wrong. Yeah, okay. Right. Um, so this is debilitated. Do you want to say anything more about um yeah, debilitated in the fourth in Capricorn. Well, I think you hit the majority of of what the issue is, and it's it's that you know people with a debilitated Jupiter in Capricorn, and it rules a third and the sixth, is they will tend to have a sibling or a peer say, "Hey, this is a great idea," and then the person says, "Oh, sounds like a good idea to me," and then you know difficult things come from it, and unhappiness comes from it because Jupiter is the planet of happiness, or yeah. you have someone who maybe is a coworker, a sixth house, or someone who's trying to sell you something or um, they're in comp- six houses with competition, the people that are in competition for True. your resources. Yep. Yep. And, and you can give too much to the competition or you can not be as courageous as you should be because Jupiter, when he's ruling a good house, he is good for courage. He's a yeah. masculine planet and, and he is a very strong, robust, courageous planet. It's just in this particular kind of situation, a person's going to tend to get taken advantage of there. Right. Mm. It's yep. too good to be true syndrome. Yep, yep, yep. Versus yep. the tenth, right? So, third, we say one? Sixth. Oh. yeah. Go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to pick up on one more idea about the fourth, but we could go to tenth and come back. No, start with fourth. Keep going. I, I'm just wondering about also, is it that being debilitated in that heart center, um, like depression or like the knocks, like the unluckiness of Jupiter, because now we're in debilitation, are going to be taken really personally because both the six and the third are personal houses. And see, what well, that's I'm glad you brought that up. And and what I have seen with that, with individuals in that kind of combination, is they actually don't outwardly appear depressed because deep down inside they still have a hope that it's going to work out. Okay. And that's, that's, I think that's worse. <laughs> and, 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 and here's why. I mean, there's a reason I think that's worse. I think it's worse because let's say someone's in a terrible relationship. Yeah. They keep hoping that this person's going to get better. Yeah. And so they spend their entire life hoping that something good is going to come of it, something good is going to change. Versus let's say, let's say you stick Saturn in there, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. You, the you realism. Stick, yeah. yeah you, you stick Saturn in there and they're going to get depressed and they're going to be sad and they're going to cry and it's going to hurt bad and they're going to hit rock bottom. But then all of a sudden they're going to say, Hey, wait a minute, this is bullshit. Like I don't need to put up with this anymore. And they're going to get stronger 
And, and they're going to learn to let go of the things that are like false senses of security or false senses of happiness. And then they actually will be happy. They will be, they will have the most, they will have the most amount of happiness possible for their life. Yeah. Right? So do you understand why I, I do, I yeah. do, I do. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And again, you know, someone I'm thinking about that I've, I've, I've been looking at their chart for, same thing. They've been in a relationship and as the, I've, I've been watching them as, as I've been talking to them and as they've been getting stronger, they're starting to recognize, wow, this guy I'm with, he's a total waste of my time. I mean, like he, he even told her I'm done growing. So I, I'm just, you know, I, I'm not like the way he, the way she's starting to see as she gets stronger and she had to go through that grief and that heaviness of Saturn before it actually happened though. Yeah. 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 Then it's great for that person, the Libra ascendant, if the debilitation is there in the fourth house with Jupiter, it is great to hit rock bottom. Like, and they're going to try to prevent themselves from doing that by being this overly optimistic, cheerful Jupiter. Right. Overcompensating. Yes. But but it's good to, um, yeah, the, the advantages of hitting rock bottom. Right. I mean, I wish, I wish that that didn't have to happen in this world, yeah, but that's how things get stronger. That's how, you know, that's how plants get stronger. If there, if there was no breeze, you know, that's interesting. Cause I remember reading a story about, um, you know, plants that are, are, are kept inside yeah. or aren't subjected yes. to breezes and, and other kinds of things. They, they're weaker actually. Yeah. Because the ones that are actually out in the elements, they have to develop parts of themselves so that they can grow stronger in that kind of environment. So Believe me, I wish the world was not set up such that that was the case. But we have malefic planets for a reason, cruel planets for a reason. We have benefic planets for a reason, and and yeah. the the intermixing of them is is what's important there. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, the exaltation. So exaltation. I of, know. Yeah. I know. Third, third Lord, third and sixth Lord in the tenth house. Any thoughts uh, on that? On, on I don't have much thoughts on this one apart from. Um, is it that the best that you can do with the best that, that Jupiter can do with the struggle of being three and six, you know, and is to uh, bring that to the world, to bring that into their activities. So uh, the sixth has this natural sense of the body and all of the complexity of the digestion of the body and all how the body works. And the three has the, the manual skills and being very skillful. Right. So can Jupiter bring those into activity in the world? Um, and will that be helpful? It brings, it brings like the, what you start out by saying, it's like the wisdom of the struggle. Yes. Right. And again, think about it. When, you know, we talked about Venus, the two greatest benefics, Venus and Jupiter. With Venus, Venus r- rules the first and is an exalted in the sixth. Yes. Okay. With Jupiter, Jupiter rules the sixth and is exalted in the tenth. Yeah. So what we see is that the person's sense of, higher fulfillment and happiness yes. comes through this sense of service yes and sharing wisdom with the world and it will be the wisdom of the struggle because libra of all in my mind at least at this point in time of all the ascendants it sort of rides this line between being able to recognize that life sometimes is horrible and life sometimes is is, is horrendous and is terrible but there is a beauty in between that and, and surrounding that as well. And that's where, that's why we, when we think about both of these benefic planets, both associated with the sixth house, both having an exaltation position related to a sixth house connection. Does this make sense? It really does. Yep. It does. And putting them in angles. Exactly. Right. It does. And Ryan, it's very hopeful what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, your, your reputation is being a little <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right <laughs> great i think we're ending this one on yes a yeah that's note. it we're done <laughs> no 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 because saturn's next right yeah. great. yes okay. that, that's good all right so this is a great segue into saturn yeah. basically yeah so i'm gonna get back into my zone all right i'll see you see all you right for saturn. thank you Fiona.